that when you are working with these cloud providers or the cloud consulting providers like uh, IBM in that case or GBS I belongs to that this is what we do with our customers we understand their business requirement business problem and then we see that okay which cloud provider can best address their problem uh, address the provide the solution and how do we implement that solution based on the experience we have and that's why may, many of the audiences would have heard the term of hybrid cloud which has now come in place which addresses the earlier issue as well which was being highlighted about the network connectivity and infrastructure that i have yet to see a customer who say i'm 100% fully on cloud and that's the way i want it to be with a single cloud provider they are most of the customers have a hybrid cloud situation that they have some infrastructure on premises which they try to connect through what vinson highlighted through apis and other integration means to their public cloud providers and where they also have uh, one or two public cloud providers one for saas one for infrastructure and in that way and uh, while you are selecting those service providers you have to look at it that okay what who can address my problems and my needs in the best way and who is providing me the best solution available from an agility point of view from security point of view from an availability point of view if again keeping network in mind if there is a service provider who has a data center within malaysia i would prefer that versus another service provider who may be the number one in the world but does not have a data center because if i know and understand from malaysia point of view that network is still an issue then i have better chances to have a better availability of my solution through that means right so there are different factors or if i am a customer whose accounting applications or other applications are everything is on microsoft platform today then for me picking another platform to do a cross platform portability or migration would be an issue so the easiest way for me is to go with the vendor who is giving me my, my current platform on cloud as well correct um we have one more question uh, uh what are the legal implications of business going to the cloud example audit authentication securities documentation Uh, what are the current developments of this in malaysia so um, let me start this and uh, mention and allan can jump in uh, i have been again working with the customers uh, if you look at so every customer or industry has their own uh, implications or requirements when you talk about financial services industry from bank nigara point of view there is rmit guidelines and i have seen uh that many of the cloud providers today like aws azure or oracle they are all working very closely with uh, or even ibm and being from a consulting part that we are working with rmit if it bank nigara on rmit that how to map it and address this right same goes from a pdpra point of view as well so there are different regulatory requirements but from each and every industry point of view i think now the cloud providers has come to a point that they are working very closely with these uh, uh, regulatory authorities to address all the requirements and map their services and provide their services where there is no problem or no issue and that's where the cloud journey adaption journey also comes in that some of the requirement states from a financial services industry point of view that you cannot move the data uh, certain data outside of malaysia and if the cloud providers do not have their current data centers available in malaysia today mm. they start uh, providing the services through other means in terms of that okay how they can provide to cloud at customer or how they give them a complete journey that where they start moving non sensitive data or the data which can be easily moved into the cloud and keep rest of them as on premises and that's where the hybrid cloud uh, also comes in okay um all we know is there anything to add if not i can move on to the next question i i i would just add a very brief one i and only because the question referenced audits so i think for those in the audience who are considering you know if i'm if i'm completing the company audit in the cloud what are the concerns and considerations and the observation that i would give you from our point of view is you know Yes there are your corporate regulatory frameworks in Malaysia which I can't speak to directly so apologies for that but you know we have not found any one regulatory system in the world that prohibits the corporate audit or the financial audit from being conducted in the cloud mm. the more important aspect is looking at the auditing standards that we are asked to complete the audit within and ensuring that we are conducting the audit in accordance with those standards 
And the two things I would say there, our, our product, as an example, is compliant to those standards. So ensuring that as you're using our product to complete your financial audit, we've ensured that you're complying at a minimum with the international standards on auditing, the ISAs. Correct. Um, we also work really closely with the regulators and standard setters around the world because they themselves recognize that the standards are probably a step or two behind the pace of change in technology. And so while the standards don't explicitly prohibit the use of technology, nor do they explicitly allow for it. And that's the problem that we see in terms of the reservation of people really embracing cloud technology to perform audits. There's this kind of gray area in the middle that people are concerned, I can't do it, when in fact, all you're doing is finding tools that enhance the quality of the work that you're delivering. And I think we can all agree in our profession, anytime we're enhancing the quality of the audit has to be a good thing. So to the person who asked the question, the regulators and standard setters, they are trying to keep pace. They don't recognize cloud as a problem they do recognise that the language in the standards doesn't necessarily reflect the world that we're living and working in today. Thank you, Alvin. Uh, next question from an entrepreneur, uh, Clement. Uh, as a business owner, um, how do I balance between benefits and cost of implementing cloud uh, in terms of business processes? And I think uh, I would pose this question to Vincent because he also started up a company 17 years ago, and I'm sure when he started his business, uh, the cost and the benefits reality is a very uh, important thing that was running in your mind. So, Vincent, do you want to answer this question? Yes, uh, thank you, Ghana, and uh, thank you, Clement, for the questions. Uh, a lot of the, the time when I uh, provide my service to uh, the uh, SME as well as even some of the bigger uh, companies, uh, when they look at the cost versus benefits, they are usually calculating the cost of the employee time versus mm -hmm. the cost of the system, and then they compare and see which one is uh, uh, more expensive and uh, cheaper, uh, and, and uh, they, they calculate the benefit from there. But uh, what they usually do not calculate is that uh, they forgot that whenever you have an employee, it is not just the employee salary cost or some indirect cost. But uh, there is a cost of management where the bosses need to actually check the work. Uh, um, they have to, you know, the, the boss's salary will be very high. So, so what I would say is that uh, uh, it, it should not be just looking at the staff salary, and uh, 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 but you also have to, have to look at the goodwill that you will, you'll be generating if you are able to provide your customer service, let's say, to solve an issue within uh, 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 two hours versus uh, three days or two weeks. Uh, uh, the kind of uh, impact that you, you will give to the customers. Um, I, I do have one customers that invest uh, about 40000 a month to 50000 a month on e-commerce platform. And um, uh, when they calculate the gross profit and uh, uh, the, the actual real transactions that, that come in, okay, it's break even, it's not too bad, not too good. But um, to, to their surprise is that after they implement the e-commerce, and they do a lot of search engine optimization. Their customers actually not just, although they didn't buy from the e-commerce, but they were browsing the product in the e-commerce, and then subsequently they will go to their retail branches to 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 uh, to, to uh, confirm the transaction and to, to to buy the product. So their their retail sales actually increased by twenty to thirty percent. Although the e-commerce is just break even. So when when we look at the cost to benefits, uh, we have to look at it uh, holistically. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Vincent. Uh, I think we have. Um, I think we can take one more last question. Uh, this is from Mr. Simon. Um, what are the real serious threat of cyber hacks? Uh, and our systems cyber fragility. What are built-in security features that cloud can offer, particularly to comply with regulatory requirements? And I think all of us could pitch into this question, but I think Risa. <laughs> 
Okay, so uh, I did address this question, uh, the other question about security, right? So let me just take it from there. So when we talk about uh, the regulatory requirements or even security in general, right, for this cloud or applications, so I would say let's divide the security into three aspects. One is the physical security, second is the network security, and the third is the infrastructure or data security, or then there could be four, infrastructure security and the data security. We need to look at it and when the cloud providers are implementing security, they again implement security from all these aspects or uh, put the aspect of the people and process and counting it as physical security, right? And as I gave an example earlier that even from cloud providers on employees, there is a very strict policy, security policies to walk into just the data centers of uh, where the customer data is being hosted and everything. Now, when we talk about network security, Again, uh, there's a lot in place that uh, there's a encryption that they, we talk about in transit encryption. So the data is being encrypted when is transiting from one point to another point, either from your own data center uh, to the cloud service provider data center, right? Or even to your customers. Uh, we talk about two-factor authentication as well. We talk about digital certificates. So I'm just giving all these technical jargons that, okay, these are the things that how uh, the cloud providers or the, even the system integrators ensure that the security is in place for, for a proper authentication and authorization. And I have yet to see anybody who's not like implementing all this two-factor authentication or even the security certificates or encryption uh, from this authorization and authentication point of view. When it comes to, again, uh, security from an infrastructure and data at rest point of view, uh, again, encryption comes in place that we talk about that, okay, all the data which is being there in the data center and in the databases or otherwise it's mostly encrypted and kept in, encrypted and only the key is mostly being held by the customer itself. So many times I was used to, to tell our own customers while implementing security uh, to the cloud solutions that, okay, please make sure that you keep and hold the key very securely and in um, have a backup or something like that because if you lose the key even for oracle who's providing this data solution will not be able to get the data back or recover this data for you because the key you are holding is the only key which is there to decrypt this data right so in, in that way from that privacy point of view and from security point of view or these are the small some of the measures there are other things which are in place as well we talk about hardening of the complete solution um, of the platform as well that the complete hardening is being done at our operating system level or application level so these are just some of the aspects not all the aspects are it's the, we don't have the time to go through everything but at a high level these are the things okay um i think we can wrap up uh, there's a few more questions but um i think uh, mia uh, we will try to work with mia and respond to them uh, there's like six seven more questions but i think uh, uh, we do understand between uh, lunch and this uh, particular event. So, um, so keep keep the question going on on the pigeonhole. Uh, we will work with MIA and uh, have that responded. Uh, but um, do you have anything to conclude, Alvin, uh, Vincent, and uh, Rizwan? Some la last thoughts to the audience in Malaysia. Uh, I know there's about there's a couple of audience from. Uh, uh, from around the globe as well, but uh, I think 85% of the audience are from Malaysia. Um, yeah, so if I, if let I me start sum, that. Yeah. Yeah, if yeah. I can sum up on a few things, um, I think uh, bandwidth is no longer an issue in Malaysia. Uh, I think all the telco providers are providing very good bandwidth today. Uh, so bandwidth is not an issue. I cannot comment so much about uh, one question that was posted for, by a gentleman in Borneo. Um, security aspect, if you look at it, it's all covered under the ISO 927001. Uh, it's all very well documented. Uh, cloud was a myth maybe five years, eight years ago, but today it's a reality. Um, so these are some of the summarization I could do. The, what, the other very important aspect for the audience is uh, there are two types of cloud solution. One, the vendor who build the application themselves provide that application in their own hosted cloud. So that would become a software as a service agreement for you uh, where you're actually renting the software 
uh, which is already run on their own premises on a monthly basis. The other way that uh, that we are talking about Azure, AWS, and um, all the other uh, uh, license key, and you just want to run it on a cloud in an event, uh, financial companies, uh, they may be doing their month-end reporting, and you just need a lot of compute power towards the end of the month, then you should go to one of these cloud providers because you probably will just pay a little bit higher on your month and spike. So these are some of the things. Reach out to MIA. If you need to talk to any one of us, uh, we are here to help you. This is uh, my quick two minutes of summarization. Uh, Alvin, Vincent, do you want to just... Yeah, I think my closing observation to the audience would be, and I say this honestly as an accountant and an audit enthusiast, I don't think there's a more exciting time to be in our profession. I think a world where accounting firms are using cloud to adapt and respond quickly to ensure that they're securely accessing their customers' data to continue to drive their services to those customers, it means that they can really become a rock for their clients and particularly in this time of pandemic, we, we've never seen as great a need. So I encourage you all to breathe in the cloud <laughs> and allow it, allow it to really provide those resources and capabilities for your businesses to be agile and flexible, whatever the world throws at you. Yeah. Um, for me, I think um, uh, being an engineer, um, I sort of, I'm not an accountant, I'm not a software programmer, software computer science graduate, and uh, definitely not a cloud expert. So, um, uh, um, my background is electrical engineering. So, in, from the start of my uh, entrepreneurship, uh, I get to learn so many things from various uh, entrepreneurs and uh, while solving the problems, I get to learn a lot of computer accounting and all that. So, um, uh, I would just say that um, it is not easy, uh, it's quite complicated, uh, uh, especially if you're looking at medium to bigger size company. Uh, if you are just a one or two man show, I think using a SaaS based application should be enough. And, and should you be uh, doing some project that are uh, mid scale to the la larger scale, uh, uh, if uh, I'm given the opportunity of, uh, to, to actually learn about it more, then I'll be most grateful. Yeah. Is that? Uh, well, I think every, all of you have summarized into it quite well, so nothing left for me to say other than that. I'll say and conclude this that uh, it's time is now. So you need to really look at it that if you have already not started this journey towards cloud, uh, you should seriously look into starting it today and now because uh, and again I've been keep calling and I always call this as a journey so don't think of it that okay there is a silver bullet which uh, cloud is a silver bullet and address all your concerns and problems today or it is something that you will just uh, do this and uh, you will have everything done on the cloud it's a journey it takes time and for you to reap the benefits of this then you need to start this journey today even no matter how small you start it but you need to take that first step. And Alvin said it right in the beginning of this session, which is really one of the most important aspects I've seen beyond technology, which is the people and processes. That while you start this journey and embark this journey, you also need to see that, okay, how it's going to impact and how do you bring the change within your organization from that people and process point of view. Because this is where I've seen many of the cloud adaptions going sour and not mm. getting the desired results which they, they want to get. Thanks, MIA. Thanks to all of you for giving us this opportunity to have this discussion with you. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you to all the audience for joining us today and I wish you all the best for the uh, future events that are happening uh, after lunch uh, and also tomorrow. Thank you very much. Uh, on behalf of MIA, thank you for attending our session. Thank you all. Thank you, Vincent. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank Have you. a nice day. Bye. Bye. Have a good day. On behalf of MIA, thank you very much to our panel speakers for their time and valuable insights. And we are deeply grateful to Mr. Ghana for moderating that interesting discussion. Thank you all for your contributions to the conference. We'll continue with the next topic in a short moment.